Welcome to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you're having a great Monday. I'm trying to make it a little bit better for you. Uh, tonight, we are back with the latest in sports, fashion, movie reviews, and the best indie music out there. Then we welcome a special guest panel to help us weigh in on what everyone's talking about in Hot Topics. We're going to talk about the surprise giveaway in Morehouse, uh, his graduation over the weekend. Offset's in the news because he uh, made some statements regarding the uh, the laws that have been passed recently about women's rights. Find out about that. Then a 55-year-old woman, it was her birthday, find out what she did because her boyfriend of two months did not buy her a gift. A lot of crazy things to discuss on Hot Topics, so stick around. I want to remind you all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and of course our official website. You can also uh, check us out on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts. Just go to our website at stephenknightshow.com. But when we come back, our, our guest panel will help us weigh in on Hot Topics. Right back after this. Just the other day, he turned and walked away Left you all alone, heart full of pain Never said goodbye, left you there to cry Broken down, standing in the rain hey. But why all your tears now, babe? Cause I can't save you Rolling down your face You know I'm coming over to make sure you're okay You don't have to win I'ma save the day I'm a superman You be all a slave You're on my way Wait, wait, wait You're on my way Wait, wait, wait You don't have to win I'ma save the day I'm a superman You be all a slave Girl, I'm on my way You must have seen it all along Girl, I'm on my way You must have seen it all along he was a fool to do you wrong, but it's okay. I'm here to stay, so stay strong and move on. Take my hand, cause I wanna be your man. Gonna wind and dine and show you my love. Make all your dreams come true. Oh. You broke your heart, tears rolling down your face. You know I'm coming over to make sure you're okay. You don't have to wait. Save the day, call me Superman. You be all a slave, girl. I'm on my way. I'll never let you down when you call on me I'll always be around if you let me be The man you need Baby, I'll fulfill your fantasy But wipe all your tears away Cause I can't save the day Gonna erase the pain Ooh, oh, the Ooh, oh, It's gonna be okay I know it broke your heart Tears rolling down your face Now I'm coming over To make sure you're okay Thank you. 
Peace, world. It's the Love King of R&B, Raheem Devon, and you're listening to the Stephen Knight Show. 
keep it locked right here. Love life. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Miss Parker, how's it going? Hey, happy Monday. Happy Monday. I know you had some fun in the sun. You want to tell about your trip to Hawaii? Yeah, I just got back yesterday. I'm a little tired, still recovering and trying to my body adjust back to this time zone. But um had a great time. My cousin Ricky graduated with his masters and he turned thirty, so it was a family trip. Oh wow. My cousin, aunt, and um his mom and grandmother they were all there. Um but it seemed like we all had separate vacations. They did their thing and we did ours. But mm-hmm. um I was a bit concerned because I wanna be there for a week and I remember you said that when you were there for a week, it was kind of boring. So I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> um, but we had an action-packed uh, week. We had stuff to do every day. Um, we saw a lot of the, the island. We did a lot of activities. Um, the days were definitely longer because yeah. we were up so early. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're up so early and we're up at 6. So by, by 8, we've already worked out and probably ate breakfast and had the whole day ahead of us. So... Um, there's a lot going on, but we it's probably one of the best vacation as far as being able to do different adventures and like be out there and get really experience the the place um, to its fullest. I think we did that. Uh, there was obviously more to see in every city you go. You can always do it see more, but I think the week that we were there, we definitely took advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, the pictures were beautiful. I know everybody was uh, commenting. I liked your post today because um, even though you're tired, you went to boot camp and everything. Uh, uh, this evening, and you uh, you posted something about thank you for the comments, my body. But you know, I work on this. It's not just something that happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, I had to pull myself out of bed this morning. Yeah, um, it's, been, it's been a really. I came yes, came home yesterday and had this surge of energy and got a lot of stuff done. But this morning, it's like I literally couldn't even move. Yeah. Um, getting to the gym was definitely an accomplishment for me today. I hear that. I hear that. Yeah, um, my weekend was pretty cool. I didn't do a whole lot, but um, yeah, I was in uh, Pennsylvania last week for work, and so this weekend was good just to be home. And I missed my um, high school reunion, which I wanted to go to, but haven't taken that last minute trip. I said I don't want to be gone that long. So anyway, but pictures look nice. Everybody looked like they had a good time. Well, the question of the day is, uh, what do you wish you were better at, Miss Parker? Is anything you wish you were better at? A better traveler as far as flying. I, I don't travel well as much as I travel. I still, um, it's a challenge for me as far as like being comfortable and enjoying the experience of being up there. Um, that's the first thing that came to mind. I wish I was one of those people who can get on the plane and just fall asleep, but I, I can't. Like, it's, it's not a pleasant experience for me. It's getting better, but I wish I was a better traveler. Well, you definitely uh, had some uh, practice flying way out to <laughs> that ten-hour flight, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I think for me, when it comes to con- conflict, sometimes it takes a certain amount for me to really deal address it. If it really gets to me, but if it's not like, like you know, like my mother was really good, and Miss Parker, you are too, with addressing things as it happens right then. You know, I have to let it build up, and I wish I was better at dealing with that conflict. You know, before it got crazy. So, but I'm getting there. I'm definitely getting there. But yeah, tweet us at home and let us know. Stephen I Show, SHO. Let us know what do you wish you were better at. All right, well, um, going into Hot Topics, we have our panel tonight. We have D Venable. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yes. And we have D Lane. Welcome back to the show. What's up? What's up? We have another one that might be calling in, but she's not here yet. So we'll go ahead and start without her. But we still love her, Savage. <laughs> All right, so... Um, so our first topic, uh, let's see, okay, Game of Thrones. So you know, it, it was eight years, eight seasons. It ended uh, the series finale ended last night, and it got a lot of mixed reviews. Um, some people who have been watching it for all eight years, they were just let down. They can't believe this is the way they ended it, and then some people thought it was good. They thought they liked the way it ended. Do any of you all watch Game of Thrones, and what were your thoughts? Uh, I've yeah. never seen uh, it. What'd you say, Ms. Parker? I've never seen it. Yeah. What'd you say, Venable? Um, I watched it, and I watched the finale actually earlier today. I didn't get a chance to watch it um, yesterday. Uh-huh. And I'm one of the people that's disappointed. You were disappointed. Like, okay. Game of Thrones for the full eight seasons, 
and I can say minus the first couple episodes, it was boring. Mm-hmm. Well, the first couple episodes were boring, and I felt like the season finale was boring as well. Like, with all the action that they had in between for the eight seasons, like, this finale was just, like, really? This is this, this the ending of it? Yeah. 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 That's why a lot of people, they had a lot of memes and things that were going around. People were just disappointed. But have there been any other series that you've watched that you didn't necessarily like the way they ended? Yes, Being Mary Jane. Being Mary Jane, okay. What was it about it? Um, so they did a movie, a two-hour movie. It seemed really rushed. They packed a lot of information in two hours. Mm-hmm. They kind of, um, I think it could have been written a little better. And I just, I, I, you know what? The show always bothers me. Uh, she can very self-absorbed and she disposed of men so easily. If that if that role was a male doing that, there would be like a lot of uproar. Like, mm-hmm. um, anyway, so I just didn't I, didn't, I didn't like the end. I didn't like the end and I didn't like how she was um, so careless with the, the gentleman who helped her through the pregnancy. She was very careless with his heart and, and if it, 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 I don't know, it just seemed cruel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, it was it was rushed and the ending just wasn't wasn't a pleasant or good. I think they should have had some redeeming factor about her and her character. In the end, the person, in mm, the end, yeah. yeah. But it's like the same person showed up. You know? Yeah, yeah. D. Lay, is there been a series that you uh, that you watched and you didn't like the way it ended? It kind of left you hanging. Um, I'm gonna say the Cosby Show. Mm. Um, <laughs> And be honest, but uh, you know, catch catch me back uh, probably like September uh, when power goes off the air, and uh, we'll, we can talk about that then. Cause that's the only only show I actually watch now. Unfortunately, you know, yeah. try to keep my mind stimulated in other ways. Yeah, and you know, it's, it'll be interesting because you know they announced that um, Empire this next season will be its last season. I wonder how they're going to end that. That'll be interesting because Justice Mullock, they said that he his contract. He's allowed to come back on the show, but they're not sure if they're going to use him. I think he's getting paid the duration of his contract, so it'll be interesting to see how they how they end the series uh, after that. But we'll be watching and we'll see what happens. All right, so our next topic. So you know, um, Georgia and Alabama recently passed laws uh, dealing with abortion and the term, um, and you know it's been very controversial. Well, Offset uh, he took to Twitter and he says that he thinks. He said the new law is slavery. He said to force a rape victim to keep a child is slavery. I'm not proud to say I'm American. Now, when he initially tweeted it, he spelled slavery wrong, but he later came back and said, sorry, I spelled it wrong, but I was just so angry. Uh, He was so angry when he tweeted it. Well, of course, he had some people come out, but he did clap back. One guy, uh, he put, he said, and, and, oh, I'm sorry. He said, offset, in between cheating on your wife, Cardi B, I hope that you take time to pick up a dictionary. It's slavery, not the way he spelled it. He said, and if you're not proud to be American, then American, then leave. And offset wrote back, he said, and in, a, and in between your time, you should look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself why as a black man support Republicans and Trump people who give a F about abortions more than black men getting killed and targeted by police. Bless up, brother. Now, Ms. Parker, I know that you had some thoughts about this since you're the female on the panel. What are your thoughts about just the whole law in itself? I mean, I, I think anybody with common sense would know that it's ridiculous to regulate for, you know, 12 or 14 white men, older white males to sit there and create a law to regulate how a woman reproduces. Um, it, it doesn't make any common sense. But I, I do think that it is a, it is a white privilege thing. It's a, it's a way of, of feeling superior um, to not only women but probably minority um, because they don't care about life. All life doesn't matter. Um, they never care about pro life or when they were slavery. So mm-hmm. I don't think it has anything to do with that or anything to do with religion. I think it's a control thing um, because if religion is saying it's supposed to be separate and a woman's right to choose. Um, should also be protected. So it's just, it's, it's, excuse me, I just think it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think anybody should support it because it's going to affect both male and female. Um, I'm, I personally don't believe in abortion. It has nothing to do with religion. It's just my personal belief. I won't have one 
Um, I'm blessed I've never been put in a position to make that decision. And I know that in itself is a blessing. But I also think that every woman should choose that for herself. Even if it is a religious thing, you don't get the you don't get the answer for somebody else's sin. Um, so what's it to you? That's you know, true. I just I just think I really just think it's ridiculous that anyone in their right mind it, it would think that that regulating a woman's right to choose was okay or normal or somehow um, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, D Lane, D Venable, anyone? Uh, I really I'll feel like this is one. Okay. Go ahead. Well, you can go ahead, brother. I was just about to say, I just really feel like this is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever really witnessed in my 40, how many, 41 years. Um, and the thing that surprised me the most, the governor of Alabama is a female. So mm-hmm. how, could you, how can you sit there as a female and sign this bill into law, um, knowing that this could affect well, not going to affect her, but maybe her daughter, maybe her niece or something of that mm-hmm. matter. But I'm sure they have means of getting what they want when they want it. It's just right. for the rest of the population that you can't do it, but we can do it behind those mm-hmm. doors if you want to. Yeah. I think it's just, it, it's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I have a, a, a completely different, thing. I mean, I have a, the same stance. Uh, I feel like there should we shouldn't tell anyone uh, what they can and what they can't do with their body. Um, that's, you know, that's, I'm not a woman, but I'm a person. So as a person, I don't, I don't think that anyone should tell me what I should do, how I should work out. You work out twice today, I saw. Yeah. You know so mm-hmm. what, it's like saying, you know, Steve, you only can work out, you know, three times a week. Right. But, um, Alabama, they have about 6,000 children currently in, for, in foster care, mm-hmm. um, that they don't give a damn about. And also, I think they're ranked like 49th in, in education. So they really don't care about kids. So I'm not sure why they care about saving kids' lives. So it's, it, it's, it's a, they're all, it, it's politics. That's why I hate it. It's, yeah. all, it's all about con- some somebody wanting to be in control of somebody else. Right. And they said the number of abortions have, have decreased considerably in the last 10 years. So I don't even know why this is even on the table. But uh, I did... I saw this picture I posted on Instagram the other day. It's, it is this uh, lady holding a sign that says, Viagra is government funded, $41.6 million a year. If pregnancy is God's will, so is limp dick. I thought that was perfect. I thought that was perfect. Because it's true. What's good for the goose, good for the gander. <laughs> if this is what to do. All right. All right. All right. Well, look, let's take a quick break. Oh, no. Before we get break, I'm sorry. I went to this last story. So, um, Nipsey Hussle, his uh, baby's mother um, is, is a wanted woman. So what she has apparently has a lengthy criminal record after she recently skipped out on court appearance in a DUI case. Her name is Tanisha Foster, and she was busted for DUI in Los Angeles a couple years back. She pled no contest uh, to, no, none of the, to, one, to one of the charges, excuse me, and was sentenced to three years of probation. Foster missed the court date uh, this past May, well, May 15th. Uh, her probation was then revoked. A bench warrant was issued. Now, the DUI arrest isn't the only thing that she is on her record. In 2007, she was busted for vandalism and uh, uh, knowing phone calls and disturbing the peace. Those charges were eventually dismissed after she completed her probation. In 2006, she was arrested for resisting arrest and disturbing the peace. The arrest warrant comes in the middle of a nasty back and forth with Tanisha and with Nipsey's brother and sister. His siblings are asking for custody of his 10-year-old daughter, Imani, uh, claiming that Tanisha is an unstable parent. Both sides were in court for an emotional hearing uh, last week, and Tanisha broke down in tears saying it's been months since she spent time with Imani. The judge cleared the courtroom and gave the two 20 minutes together. A judge has yet to rule in custody of Imani. Do you think, based on her background, that she'll um, she'll keep custody, Miss Parker? Yes, I think a woman. Yeah, I think she should have her child. Mm-hmm. Um, I think her crim- I think you know, people make mistakes, and there are people out there trying to. That's like telling a dad who's been in prison when he comes out that he can't see his child have a relationship with his child. That's ridiculous to me. Um, I guess I'm also not understanding why the sister and brother are fighting so hard to take her away from her mother when, when he was alive. This person who is very conscious, very aware, um, when he was alive, he, tr- 
chose to leave his daughter with her mother. Uh-huh. She's a very sensible person, um, a person who is able to decide whether or not his daughter was in danger or whether or not she was being well taken care of, being well rounded. He chose to keep her with her mother. Um, that should tell you how he felt about the environment that she's been raised in and the kind of mother that she is. I'm not mm-hmm. condoning any of her criminal behavior, so I just think that if the father felt like she was good enough to, to, to raise her, their, his child when he had a lot of influence and a lot of ability to take her away from, from her mother and chose not to, they should do the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Do you um, I, I just really feel... I mean, I understand that, that you know parents should have their children that they're they're willing and able. Um, I I just feel on the on the sister and brother's part. To me, it, everything when it when things when family is involved, everything is re, is revolved around money. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure there's some money involved when it comes to Imani. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes brother, sense. Like Michelle said, the brother and sister now want custody, um, and Nipsey chose to leave his daughter with his mother. With her mother, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So why now? Why do you why do you want to go to court and try to fight this lady for custody? Um, I mean, it does say that she just recently skipped out on, on a DUI case. But just like you said, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So if you're going to give everybody else a second, third, fourth, fifth chance, then give her a chance with her daughter to try to at least be right a, a good mother in her life. And if she's not, then later down the road, you know, go back and try to take custody. Yeah. About you, Delane. You're a parent. Um, I am a parent. Um, so this this one kind of hits close to the home for me um, because I I have a nephew that um, was uh, raised by my brother, but my brother uh, was was an idiot, and got arrested, and um, his son had to go back and live with his mother. I actually fought to uh, keep him in Virginia, and that didn't that didn't happen because she's his mother and of course she got custody but she didn't give a damn about him um so that's a that's, a, that's another story so but if this woman already had custody of her child and as michelle said you know nipsey was of a sound mind and body so it wasn't like he was saying hey i need my daughter away from you so i'm not sure again why? But as Derek would say, uh, it has to be money. Yeah, involved. I agree. yeah, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. But I can tell you this: you know, I used to work with the youth um, in the criminal system, and it it takes almost an act of God to take a child from their mother. They, I mean, the mother has to just be the worst human being for them to actually take from the child. So I don't think I think the the daughter will stay with her mother. You know, unless yeah, and, and that's just say it is. You know, I think that um, when people are grieving also, yeah. when money is in play, yep. things happen. Yeah. Um, parents tend to have the most um, friction in their in their circle when a death occurs and it's money involved. That's true. So I'm just hoping that somehow they're going to come back around to see things differently and work things out in a more positive way because I don't think Nipsey would have wanted it. And so I think in these times we have to remember all of us that when we lose someone there's money and conflict involved. Um, what what was this person, you know, encouraged us to do? Who like what type of person were they? Would they want us to bring be in friction with each other or would they want us to be peaceful and right. solve this out of the court and out of the public's eye? I don't think he would have wanted any of his business regarding his daughter. Right. Uh, as public as, his, as, exactly. as it has become. I so agree. I hope that they can overcome their emotions. I know they're still going through a lot and, and figure it out privately. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Let's take a quick break, come back with a few more hot topics. Right back after this.
But you're so damn fine. But you're mine. But you're mine. Mine. But you're mine. But you're mine. Mine. Hey, what's up? This is Kima, and you're listening to the Stephen Knight Show. Make sure you check out that Love Me Back. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. I want to remind you we're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and of course our official website, thestephennightshow.com. You can also check us out on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Just go to our website. All right, so uh, Lamar Odom, you know, he's coming out with this tell a book um, called Darkness to Light. And according to TMZ, he wanted to represent the U.S. so bad in 2004 Olympics that he used a prosthetic penis to pass a drug test and that he obviously was going to fail. He writes, we started Googling fake penises and studied different ways to beat a drug test. After an exhaustive search, we ordered a giant rubber black cock to arrive the next day. <laughs> Odom writes in the expert, it was an expert uh, first provided by People Magazine. He said, I unzipped my pants and carefully slid the fake penis through the zipper hole. To get the pee to come out of the tip, I had to squeeze the shaft repeatedly. Um, he went on to talk about how paranoid he was when the tester showed up at his house uh, to take the sample, but somehow, you know, he went undetected. Um, the U.S. had a terrible, now that year, the terrible, the U.S. had a terrible showing and came in third, went home with a bronze medal. And so Boston was reporting this, they said that kind of makes you wonder who else was uh, on that sauce that summer <laughs> and they had to use, uh, drink, fake the test. What are your thoughts on the tell-all book? Do you, do you think you can tell too much, or Miss Parker, is there yeah. something you wouldn't tell? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like you know, I was rooting for him, and like you know, is he off that stuff? And, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I I don't know, I don't know. I, I think I think everyone has the right to tell their own story. Um, yeah, and I think it's important that we all do so our at our own time and 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 whenever we're ready. Um, so I can't blame him for that. I just I'm not interested in any of it. Personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill, you said you can't tell too much. It, it can be too much. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm I'm wondering was he high when he wrote this? Like, <laughs> and then he was so descriptive with it. That he right. Rubber black. Uh, you know? Right. <laughs> Do you like? Now who's gonna buy the book? That's what I want. Right. I, people gonna buy the book. I, t- I guarantee it. But you know, I think that's why they put this as, as the first episode because. They want something that people are going to want to be interested in. You know, something salacious. You know what I mean? Do you like? Oh, man. I, I do believe you can uh, you can tell too much. So that's why um, I'm going to let uh, D. Venable write my story for me. <laughs> uh, I, I, <laughs> I think he knows enough to, to write just enough about me. Because, you know, if I, if I start writing, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't you can't say everything. Right. That's just like talking to, in a relationship. Don't say everything. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, you know, build build up to it. I agree. You know? I agree. Well, according to New York Daily News, an Arkansas woman uh, was sentenced to 15 years in prison for allegedly posting as a sheriff's deputy to trick the authorities into releasing her boyfriend from jail. Now, her name is Maxine Felston Felstein. She was 30. And reportedly pled guilty earlier this week for forgery and being a compl- a co- a accomplice, excuse me, to escape and criminally impersonate in the second degree after helping her boyfriend escape the Washington County Detention Center in July of last year. Now, officials with the Washington County Sheriff's Office claimed that to have received a call from the woman who identified herself as Deputy Crenshaw of the Ventura uh, County Sheriff's Office and said that she faxed over paperwork detailing the release of Nicholas Lowe, who at the time was in custody uh, for felony theft. Then two days later, an actual deputy from Ventura County Sheriff's Office contacted the Sheriff's Office and was told what happened. The warrants were issued for the arrest of Lowe and Felstein on August 1st, and they were arrested a little over two weeks later on the 17th. Lowe pled guilty in February to third-degree escape and was sentenced to a year in prison. Feldstein was sentenced to 30 years in the correction, but suspended half sentence. Are you that Rodney Diamonds Parker for your uh, for your dude? 
So I don't even believe in that whole concept of ride and die. So that answers. Venable. Yeah. I, I just I want to know what's going to happen to the people that actually believe her. Like what's going to happen to the sheriff's right. sheriff department that got these fake documents, didn't didn't review it, didn't check with nobody, and just let this man go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How she get in there? I mean, how she get access to all that? that? that that's, my, that's my question. Uh, like, I, I, I don't know how she did that. I mean, she's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they need to. They they need to do an internal investigation and see where the ball was dropped because something something went off. Well, check this story out. So this is a woman. She uh, it was her birthday. She was fifty five. <laughs> I said venerable the story earlier, and he said that he don't have a problem with this. The woman turned 55 years old. Her name is Georgia Zawacki. And apparently she had been dating this guy uh, of two months. And he lived with her. And so earlier that day, he took her out to eat for her birthday. But she, And so she came home, you know, and, and started drinking her vodka. And I guess she got in her feelings because he didn't get her anything, any a gift for her birthday. So she took a box cutter. And went to the to the bedroom and stabbed him four times, and so when the police were called, uh, oh, she also took it to his throat and said she was going to kill him. But when the police came, uh, she, she told them that she was upset because not only did he not get her a gift, but no one else got her a gift. Miss <laughs> Parker, your thoughts? Um, blame it on the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's no way. I mean, you start drinking that sauce. You gotta know your limits. Gotta know your limits. I wonder what she was doing. She sat there and it just snapped. (laughs) That she ain't getting no gift. (laughs) (laughs) Venable, what's your thoughts? I'm sitting here like um, the retribution face she was giving normal. (laughs) Right. I mean, it's 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 very extreme. However, <laughs> I get it, man. Sometimes, like you said earlier, you sometimes you let stuff build up and build up and build up, and then <laughs> you get to that point and you're like, you know what? Like, fuck it all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they haven't been dating too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, man. <clears throat> I, first, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the dude. Um, this book is called. Uh, your your love languages yeah. so apparently hers is definitely she needs gifts so he needs that book and but you know you know women she's she, she's emotional she was very emotional she's had a long day it's her birthday um you know, she just needed she just needed love, and uh, but nobody bought her a gift though. You know? No one bought her a gift. But, yeah, but yeah. And, but. It but hurt. But if you're the, <laughs> so when you're an adult, when you're an adult, fifty five, right? <laughs> but my thing is, if for him, when she came to, you know, wore off, and you know, you did this, do you stay with her? <laughs> what do you do? Because <laughs> she did it when she was drunk, I, obviously. I suggest, he, I suggest he doesn't. Right, run like fire, my mommy say, run like fire. <laughs> oh. <sighs> All right, well, last story. This will make everybody smile. Um, billionaire Robert F. Smith, chairman of S- chairman and CEO of Vista Equity Partners, he gave a commencement sp- speech at uh, Morehouse. And, you know, during his speech, he, he, uh, he vowed to pay the class of 2019's uh, financial debts off, and, you know, their uh, student loans off. And it was over 396 students. So they're saying the gift's probably going to be up worth of $40 million that he said that he's um, going to pay off. And a lot, of course, everyone was ecstatic. They had a video of this one guy. He, he, like, he won something on Jeopardy. He's just in his face. But a, one, a lot of people were saying it felt like his Mother's Day all over again. And just, you know, starting up. Because most people, when they graduate, you know, if you take out student loans, when you go into the workforce, you already have that debt. And these kids don't have to worry about that. What are your thoughts, Ms. Park, when you heard the story? You know what? I, I, I am definitely happy for them. I think everyone um, that received this kind of, it, it was their blessing, and, and yeah. we should uh, be really positive and happy for them. Um, I think, you know, I graduated without a student loan because I worked, mm-hmm. uh, worked 
full time all through college, and I also had a partial scholarship, and it made a difference. Um, I don't think I would have been as uh, financially stable as I am if I had to pay student loans and, and, and would have had opportunities to make some of the decisions financially that I've made with student loans. So I know how beneficial it can be without with being able to graduate and not have student loans. Um, and I also see other people who've been paying student loans for 30 years. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's a blessing and I'm really happy for them. And I just hope that they're able to move uh, forward and pay it forward and do great things because that's already set them up for greatness. Mm -hmm. um, not that graduating college wasn't enough, but I think it's, it's, um, it's an opportunity for them to somehow give back and pay it forward in the life that they choose moving, moving forward. Yeah, yeah. Venable? I love this story because to me, it's, it's, it's starting off generational wealth. Yeah. Well, I feel like as African Americans, we we never really get a head start at anything. Mm -hmm. And for this guy to tell mm -hmm. their dad to give them a head start, I, I love it. Like I like stories like this versus seeing Drake bought a hundred million dollar plane. Yeah, so, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Do you like? All right, I listened to this man's speech, and uh, you know, the the financial portion of that um, is, is wonderful. Um, it's very, it touched my heart. Um, I'm very uh, unapologetically pro-black. Um, the the thing that captivated me the most was when he says it's up to us mm -hmm. to look out for us. Yep. Yep. And he said this is his class, and basically he put everybody else on the clock going forward to say, hey, this is what I, this is what we should be doing. We have the, we have the resources. Let's use these resources to help our people. Yep. Yep. So that was the most powerful statement for me. Now, I mean, the financial, the financial thing, I know Morehouse is crazy expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and fortunately, fortunately, I'm like Miss Parker. I, I, um, I worked full time and, and my job actually paid for me to go to school basically. Um, but man, that that's a that's a true blessing, and I, I did also read that a kid who didn't graduate last year on time, wow, was supposed to was wow. was really down because he was supposed to graduate last year, wow, and he graduated in this class, and that was his. That, that's a blessing. Yeah, because God has everything in place for you exactly when it's for you exactly. That's well said. I didn't know about that. And what this man did, uh, Mr. Smith, what he did was he invested into this class. You know, and and I and someone said it earlier today that I believe that seed that he sowed is gonna be bigger than the forty million that alleged he's gonna be paying because these other kids they get this example of wow this is what I, what greatness can do and hopefully they'll pay it forward and all those people that he touched the four hundred people he touched hopefully they'll be able to plant that same those same seeds and sow it in other people I think that's amazing and so. I just wish he was at Virginia State in 2003, but whatever. God bless him. God bless him. <laughs> exactly. Let's, let's just hope that the guy that worked at Howard is not at uh, Morehouse now. Right. That's what they, I saw the memes. <laughs> I saw the memes. But <laughs> well, listen, D. Venable, D. Lee, Ms. Parker, as always, thank you for Hot Topics. Hope you all have a great week. Uh, and I know D. Lee and D. Way, you, uh, D. Venable, excuse me, you have um, – your Facebook page. You want to talk about that real quick before we go? I mean, the Instagram page? Instagram page. Um, Husband Material EFT 2019. Um, it's, just, it's just basically another format where some topics um, are posted for discussion. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just a place where to, to express your, your opinions on topics of the day, topics of the week. Um, just another outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we definitely appreciate you all tonight. Have a great week, and we'll talk again soon, okay? All right. All right, brother. All right. Right back after this. Close, but then you slipped away. Now I'm losing.
my baby It's driving me crazy And I'm about to go insane The hell am I gonna do? Can't do this thing without you Though forever was on Now forever is gone And baby girl I'm missing you Took you on shopping sprees When all you really wanted was time with me Eyes wide open but I could not see Just know if ever you give me a chance I'm giving you all Giving you all I'm giving you all me, giving you all, giving all, giving you all me, giving you all, giving all. When I was struggling, you held me down. When I was slipping, girl, you stood your ground. Anytime I felt lost, always gave me real talk. You helped me be a better man. Then this music finally came around. I'm flying high, but you ain't need a crown. The shit I put you through, the hell am I to do? Cause baby girl, I'm missing you. Don't you want shopping sprees? Yeah. When all you really wanted was time with me. Oh. Eyes wide open, but I could not see. Just know if ever you give me a chance. I'm giving you
the closest thing to perfect. I sleep by the phone, waiting for your call. I'm prepared to give you all. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's the First Lady Faith Evans, and you're listening to the Stephen Knight Show. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Chike's out today, but Adam, I'll let you take it away with movie reviews. Well, first of all, how was your weekend? Oh, it was really good. I went to uh, visit some family uh, down in Atlanta, so... Uh, uh uh-huh. Had a good time. Had a good time, you know. <laughs> I think I think you might have been out of town or busy. So I was here. I'll catch you like that. <laughs> but but, no, but I had a good time. It was I mean, it's hot. Yeah. Heat's coming. Oh so, yeah. Uh, it was, it's nineties all this week. Nineties yeah. all this week. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm. that's crazy. But it was good. How about you? Yeah, my weekend was cool. I was supposed to, actually supposed to go home for uh, my high school reunion, but because I had to take that last minute trip to Philly. I decided to stay here just to kind of regroup, but I had a good weekend. I just yeah. hung out with some friends and you know stuff around here. Pretty okay, chill. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can't complain. Well, I know everyone's talking well, about. Me, yeah. Well, go ahead. You, I'll okay. let you take. I'll let you take it away. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I'll kick off the movie review, and then we can go into uh, the the show of the the hour. Right. But, um, so I saw John Wick three or John Wick Chapter three Parabellum. And okay. I know last week I said it's coming out, and I wasn't really high on my list, but I said I'll give it a shot because it was kind of a slow weekend. And it did become number one at the box office, so okay. uh, it did a great job. It uh, you know took down Endgame. Uh, and it follows the story, if there anyone who hasn't seen the John Wick uh, 1 and 2, this follows pretty much directly after number 2. Uh, and this time John Wick, played by Keanu Reeves, is now a marked man and all the other assassins. Uh, there's a bounty on him, so they're all going to try to track him down. And overall, it's it's a heavy action movie, not a lot of substance. You know, they did they created a great world in the first one, and you get a little more in the second one, and you get a little more in this one. But really, it's just if you're looking for nonstop action, some kind of creative stuff um, in the fight scenes, then you will like it. For me, uh, I, it was definitely a pass. I think there was a lot of very choreographed fight scenes that just felt like, you know, you knew they were going to just kind of do this for the next three or four minutes before they resolve anything. Um, a lot of it seemed like, especially at the beginning, it's, you know, John, Keanu Reeves fighting in a room full of knives. Okay, mm. now let's see if Keanu Reeves can fight in a stable using horses kind of to help him as his weapon. Um, so it, it kind of felt a little stale for me. Uh, the world building wasn't as good. I will say, though, they did have Halle Berry in this movie. Uh, she plays uh, a, one of the other staff that oh, yeah. kind of retired and mm-hmm. helping John, John Wick out. She did a great job. She wasn't in it enough. You know, she was only in it for a brief amount of time, and then she kind of goes her own way, and he goes his own way. So I felt like they could have used her a little more and leveraged that. But, um, yeah, overall, you know, they're setting it up for a sequel, so there'll be another one. But, yeah, it, it was kind of a big miss for me. But if you're looking for action, and in my theater people were loving it, then – Check it out, and uh, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, that's crazy because Holly Berry for promote, promoting it a lot, so it's, it's interesting that she doesn't have more time in the movie. Yeah, yeah, maybe they just gave her a really big paycheck, and right. like, well, I don't want to be in all of it. Right. So right. I'll promote it, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there must have been some contract agreement, because, you know, I haven't seen her in anything in so long. It was kind of a surprise yeah, uh, yeah. to see her. So. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, she still got it. Um 
And then, yeah, um, I caught the Game of Thrones last night, the final episode of the whole series. Mm. And uh, I, I mean, it'll probably be a little spoiler, so for people who don't want to listen, you can move along from this section. But I, I actually liked it. I think it was the best episode of the season. Really? Uh, and it wasn't an exciting season for me. Yeah, but it, it's so, you know, I'm used to these shows that kind of, I, I watched Lost all the way to the end, and I've watched other shows where, you know, they, they build such a world, they build so many layers, how can you really end it? Right. And I think they ended it the best way they could. Um, you know, they, they kind of gave resolution to the main characters, and, you know, people kind of just, their stories ended, and you kind of kind of see that this is this is it. So, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't, I don't think, what anyone was expecting on a lot of fronts, and it wasn't amazing, but... Yeah, it was a good send off and a farewell to kind of these characters we've watched for the past ten years. I know you haven't caught up on them yet, but no, not uh, at now all. you get your chance. <laughs> but Chike wanted me to read his but, post. His post, he said, "I want to throw the whole yeah. series finale of Game of Thrones in the trash. This was a complete letdown. And for the <laughs> record, I hate Brand Shark's face. HBO, why? There has to be a better way." That was legit. well, yeah, and so uh, I know Stephen Yolk you'll watch it eventually so you and you won't remember this because you'll probably watch it for later but uh bran does become king of the the kingdom he he, he he becomes the, the king and i didn't expect it but he, this is a character that's kind of uh, since after episode one he's been um wheelchair bound or crippled so it was uh, you know they did a lot with them and having the hodor character kind of carry him around and fulfill his story so it was kind of cool to at least give him a little bit of something to go with. Um, and in the end, it is, it was, it's really about the Starks. Uh, so you get Arya's kind of ending, uh, going out into the West. You get Sansa becoming the queen of the North. Uh, and then Jon going back past the North up into the forest, into the wildling area. So that's kind of how they ended it. Um, and again, it is, I, I can imagine she gave, which like a lot of people who, or as it was expecting something different, but again, I think they did the best they could with um, what they could do in ten years of episodes. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, I wouldn't know. And now you'll have to watch it, <laughs> right? Yeah, I was about to say now you'll have to watch it. Yeah, someone on one of the um, shows I was watching this morning said that she's on season four. <laughs> oh wow! Trying oh, to catch God. up, right? Well, you, well, look, Stephen, you take a good. Uh, Good, good few days off. You just get the, the trial of HBO Go, and you can watch right. it all in two weeks. Exactly, exactly. Wow. So, well, how about you? Do you catch up on anything? Did you see anything? I have not watched anything because I was traveling last week, and then this weekend I wasn't really home. But um, but I'm going to finish watching that uh, series this week. Hopefully, that I was watching it's called like, All American. I'm wa- finish watching that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't. I have, do you so now when you travel? Uh, do you uh, you know you're on a plane? Do you, are you listening to music or are you watching? Are you a movie or a TV show person or what? How's your, uh, your well, travel if entertainment? I'm, if I'm flying for like like I'm going cross country, I will watch movies and things like that. But if I'm like I didn't actually get much sleep the night that I was the night before I was traveling, so I slept <laughs> on the plane mm-hmm. and okay. then and then I slept back. So and I listen to, like I'm in between sleep and listening to music. So yeah, that's what I did this time. Okay, okay, okay. Do you do podcasts at all or no? No, I usually just do a good movie because I'm usually about two hours, you know what I mean? And um, so I yeah, do, yeah. do that, and then I, or I just listen to music, but yeah. Or sometimes I act like I act like listen to music so the person beside me won't talk, so I have my headphones on, but it'll be off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I uh, I got these uh, the, those AirPods, you know, the little wireless ones that I, Apple makes out of yeah. a, a company contest and. They man, I love them. I'll, I'll walk around with them, and I won't even have them on. Sometimes yeah. I don't have a chance to put the music on. Uh-huh. So if you walk around, no one's bothering you. You're good. To yeah, go. exactly. So, um, mm-hmm. I like them. Are they coming out of pipeline? Well, so this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, and the big movie is Aladdin. Uh, again, the one with Will Smith as the genie. So I will. I you know I'm not excited about it, but I will, for the sake of the listeners, go check it out and see if it's worth the hype. Um, and right now, I think Avengers is 114 million away from toppling Avatar. So oh, wow. that's kind of exciting. We'll see if it actually happens now with uh, Aladdin coming out and kind of the summer movies kicking off. 
But, uh, yeah, right now, Aladdin's just kind of the top one on my list. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Anything else? Uh, no, that's different. Oh, I am going to check out that Chernobyl show. I know every, everyone, uh, everyone's been talking about it nonstop, so um, I guess I'm going to need to see what it's all about. All right. Well, Adam, as always, thank you for keeping us in the know, letting us know what to spend our money on, what not to, and have a great, great week. All right, thanks, you too. All right, right back after this. Oh, we got another one, bro? Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Slight work, slight work. Slight work, slight work, slight work. I'm going to get right, bro. That the money won't change me All I know is that the money won't change me All I know is that the money won't change me All I know is that the money won't change me All I know is that the money won't change me Stack money, yeah I'm living great If it ain't about money, niggas gotta wait Bezos said he wears great Driving four to the eight Ain't a riddle, but it got New York plates And these bitches don't love you They around, cut the money Only chasing money, honey Change my ways, now y'all call me funny But boy, yeah, I'm really hungry Head high when it get ugly I want my music through the country So y'all could really hate Bitches stay to stay, girl, we don't really date I just let y'all niggas hate I'm me and IG at the gate Big cuz home, man, I can't wait Big bucks, Jigga Joe All I know, never love a hoe All I know, move differently all I know, get this gritty. Niggas know me. All I know is talk through my fucking city. All I know is niggas gon' hate. Low do. All I know is fuck you, pay me. Fuck you. All I know is money make the world go. Make it go. All I know is that the money won't change. Change me. me. All I know is niggas gon' hate. They gon' hate. All I know is fuck you, pay me. Fuck you. All I know is money make the world go. Make it go. All I know is that the money won't change. Millie rock, Millie rock, Millie rock. Hit the milli rock, hit the milli rock. All I know is that the money won't change me. All I know, I gotta talk my shit. Freeze ray on my neck. Designer outfit, only rock valid shit. Only whip valid whip. Shorty, I ain't coming through. If it ain't a valid trip, yeah, I let them 32s. 15, valid shit. Drill time, had it lit. Fuck your bitch. I got a split. Yeah, she give me top, but I don't make the clip. I chase all the money, can't wait to be rich. Niggas, they be switching. Haters better listen. Get off my dick, I only got money vision. Niggas not in my division, my attention will be given. I know y'all hate how I'm living well. Low dude, low dude, uh, cuz All I know is niggas gon' hate All I know is fuck you pay me All I know is money make the world go All I know is that the money won't change me All I know is niggas gon' hate All I know is fuck you pay me All I know is money make the world go, make it go All I know is that the money won't change me All I know is that the money won't change me won't ha, change me. Won't change me. Great. How are you, Steven? Oh, no. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's going really, really well. Um, you know, I can't complain. I never do. Well, at least not on the radio. So <laughs> there's a lot of mess going on behind the scenes. So I apologize to everybody for not being consistent. But, yeah. I do, I do. Okay, so I have a lot of things. So I have a lot of stuff to unpack this evening. So. I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so Saks Fifth, Ave- Saks Fifth Avenue, I usually talk about Offset. I'm actually talking about Saks Fifth Avenue today. They're having a sale, um, and if you shop now, you can get up to 50% off of select items, and that's the only reason I'm talking about Saks, um, because you're getting 50% off. Um, Hay Needle, this is a like home goods 
an online home goods uh, store, sort of similar to Wayfair and Justin May, where they're having a Memorial Day sale. And if you shop there now, you can get 15% off of your purchase with code YAY15. Uh, Bloomingdale's is having a sale, and the only reason I'm mentioning this is because this is a phenomenal sale. I'm not sure if people are wearing Gucci again, but if they are, uh, you can shop Bloomingdale's and get 50% off of women's Gucci shoes. If you, I'm sorry. No, I'm right here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, if you shop Gap now, you can uh, get 50% off of everything, up to 50% off of everything in the store and online. Plus, if you're shopping online, you can get an extra 20% off of your online purchase with code WARMUP at checkout. Uh, Neiman Marcus Last Call is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get $100 off of every $200 that you spend. Um, and, of course, if you're shopping online, you need to use code SAVE now. Um, Banana Republic is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get an extra 40% off of sales off of sale styles. Plus, you can get 30% off of everything else. Old Navy is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get 50% off of all tees, tanks, shorts, and swim items. Uh, Carter's is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get up to 60% off of uh, all pajamas, plus you can get an extra 20% off of your purchase of $50 or more. Um, if, you, if you're shopping online, you have to use code 20SUMMER at checkout. Uh, the Women's is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get 40% uh, off of all new arrivals, plus you can get uh, clearance items starting at just $14.99. And last but not least, J. Crew is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get... Um, you can get an extra, I'm sorry, you can get 35% off of select items. And if you're shopping on, online, you have to use code HIGHSUMMER at checkout. That's all I have for you guys this evening. Hey, Shirley Kans. All right, talk to you then.
Back to the Stephen Knight Show, A. Ron Cosby. Been a minute. How you doing? I'm back. Yes. I'm back. I'm back. How how were your um exams? Two A's and two B's, bro. Awesome, awesome. Keeping it going, keeping it going. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. I have two more classes to take this summer. I'm done with my second master's. Wow. Party, and I'm going to turn up. And wow. Wow, that's amazing. Right that's amazing. I'll, I'll be back in law school in August. So. Wow, wow. Well, congratulations. So Very proud of you. Thank you. Thank yeah. You so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let's talk about these sports, man. Yes. I don't know if you've been keeping up with the NBA playoffs. Uh, I've been watching here and there. I, I know who's in it and who's playing and who's, you know, this. I know the, you know, who's winning okay. and who's not. Yeah. Well, I'm, okay, since. Since you know, I'm going to quiz you. Don't quiz me. <laughs> Don't quiz me. You said, what are the four teams? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Golden State against Portland, and it's 3-1 Golden State. And then uh, the Bucks and the Raptors, uh, 2-1. Uh, the Bucks. Okay. You got the teams right, and you got... The record right of the Eastern Conference. Oh, is it one and two? My bad. <laughs> no, you still. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, are you saying their um, their rankings? Oh, I thought you were talking about the um, their own record. I was about the, the series. You, they're not, okay. Well, ESPN lied. <laughs> okay, okay, no, 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 no. I think what, what happened is that you were looking at their ranking, at their standing. Golden State, because you said that Golden State and Portland and Golden State is up three to one. That's what I thought, Andy, I saw. Andy, Am Andy, I wrong? Milwaukee and Toronto, and that Milwaukee's up two to one. Yeah. So what is that? It says right here, Port- Portland... I mean, Warriors are three. Are three? Are, uh, oh no, no, it's three and oh. Oh, it's three and oh. My bad. <laughs> right. Right. Three and oh, and three and oh. Yeah. Portland is the third. Um, is the third seed. Right, and Golden State is one, number one. Playoffs. Yeah. Golden State number one. So right. That's what, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Well, they should make it so confusing. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. but uh, but uh, but the Bucks are up two to one against uh, the Raptors. Yeah, yeah, I got that one right. Okay. Hey, broken clock is right twice a day. Got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your thoughts so far on the series? Well, I don't see Portland winning four games. Yeah, four. yeah. I don't see that happening. Yeah. So it's a, but then again, if I say it, I don't know. They, they might run it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's going to be amazing yeah, to come back yeah. from that much of a deficit. Yeah, I don't think my um, stance on on this series will actually affect it at all. So I'm going to go ahead and 
State that Golden State is going to win this series. Mm-hmm. And I'm venturing, venturing to say that that's going to happen. Like it's it's going to hold up. Yeah. Yeah. If Portland wins four games in a row, hey. Um, they deserve it. <laughs> they deserve yeah, it. Take it on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and they need to reach out to me, and I need to get something like a, a, a birthday cake, something. Something. Like maybe y'all can pay my tuition. For the right. Something, 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 something. Right. Something, something, something. Um, which I don't, um, I don't want to really be, be, be leaguer this um, situation, but I kind of want to just talk about it just for a second. Big prop to um, I think his name is Robert Smith, mm-hmm. Mr. Smith, who was um, the commencement speaker over at Morehouse. Yeah, yeah. Pa- he paid off the paying every year. Mm-hmm. Big up to that. I know that's not sports related, but still, it is life. And no, it is. It's huge. It should be recognized. We talked about it in our topics, but it's huge. but yeah, it is def- definitely to be it's repeated. Huge, yeah, to that was huge. That. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah, and I hope that more people who are able to do that, yeah, will do that. Exactly. I, I really hope that that starts a trend. Yeah, like you'll see other people starting. Most definitely. So, Most definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but but yeah, so. Golden State, they're going to move on. I I'll actually say that they'll 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 probably sweep Portland. Mm. I don't think Portland has anything left in them. Yeah. I, I just think yeah. I just think that it's game three when they had that large lead and then they come and then they just lost it. I just think that that pretty much took all the air out of their tires. Like they're they're done. I know it's crazy yeah. crazy for. Uh, uh, Steph and Seth's parents <laughs> to be yeah. there, you know. But you see, they have the jerseys where the front has uh, one player and the back has the, the the other son. I think that was creative, showing support for everyone. They should actually sell those jerseys. Yeah, I, I think that Nike or Reebok or whoever makes those jerseys, mm-hmm. if the um, Curry family can some kind of way, do whatever. Yeah, Under Armour, Under Armour. Mm-hmm. They need to, yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, I think people would would buy those jerseys. They would buy them up because they were so cool. It was yeah. so cool. And I like the fact that they didn't that they didn't do them down the middle and in the front and back. Yeah. Like yeah. Like half. I like that they did it front, one team, one son, back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I thought that was that was more tasteful. But yeah. Um, Seth, this is your brother's world, and you're just living in it for right now. It's it's kind of like Jan Brady, kind of like Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> right. Uh huh. <laughs> That's true. Though. That's I mean, true. I mean, seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Seth actually is the middle child of his siblings. They they have a younger sister, and mm. Steph is is the oldest. And yeah, Steph is just. It's his time. Yeah. 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 Um, mm-hmm. I, I would. I would like to, to just be a part of the family just to see how they interact. Yeah. Is it, is it all good? Is there like? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, would, I, I would. I would think so. I'm sure it's competitive, but that's any sports family. But I'm sure you Absolutely. know. At the end of the day. That's, yeah. Right. Seth has a good life. Now, let's mm-hmm. not get it twisted. Seth is a millionaire. Right. He's, good. He's not crying. He's living his dream. <laughs> yeah. He, he, Seth, Seth is good. Mm-hmm. Seth is good. Yeah. He's good. All right. So, Eastern Conference. Milwaukee. I still think they're going to win a series, but I did not like what I saw in, in game three. It mm. was. Yeah. I'm like, y'all let Toronto back in that game, back in the series. Like, they are back in. Mm-hmm. They can easily win game four. They're at, they're at home. Yep. They have a little bit of a, a of an edge going on right, right now. So, Toronto could easily win game four, and then we're now at a, at a three-game series. So, yeah. Which, to me, once it's at pretty much 0-0, zero, because zero, once it's, like, tied up – Two to two in a seven game series. In, in essence, it's it's a whole new series. It's mm-hmm. the best out of three. Yeah. So, yeah. 
we'll we'll see what happens. We we shall see. But um, I've seen where back in the nineties, the the Knicks. I don't know if you remember the Knicks and Bulls series back in the day. Like they've had some really good playoff, mm-hmm. um, games. Those were the days. Yeah. Those 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 were the days. The um, Knicks had won the first two games of the Eastern Conference Finals back in 1993. Everybody thought that the Bulls were done. It was over. Um, Jordan just doesn't have it anymore. He's, you know, he's hit his prime. It's a wrap. Mm-hmm. And the Bulls won the next four games. Yep. I do remember that. On the way. I do remember that. On the yeah. way to playing Phoenix in, in the finals, and then they beat Phoenix and the rest of history. And that's what, that was their first of two three-peats. Yeah. Games. But, yeah. So, Toronto could easily win these these next two games and and win four and and it's over and they go to the finals. We'll see. I would like to personally I, w- I would like to see Golden State and Milwaukee. Yeah. So, yeah. To yeah. yeah. me, just I want the um, the best two teams. Yeah. Exactly. Two teams. That's it. Let the best two teams in play, win, bam, whatever. So, what do you? Yeah. What are your thoughts on this whole Magic Johnson situation with, you know, he stepped down from the Lakers after uh, the email that he was copied on? They were talking about him. Um, you know, he gave an interview uh, yesterday or today, and he was saying that he felt like the general manager there um, was backstabbing to him. And so um, the general manager, he gave a – he was asked about it at a press conference, and he said that, you know, he was – he said that working with Magic has been the highlight of his career over the last however years they worked together and that, um, you know, they did a lot of great things together and they've even kept in touch, you know, since Magic step, walked, stepped away and uh, or stepped down. And um, to hear these comments is disappointing, but he said he's going to continue to nurture the relationship like you do any nurture when you're trying to re- repair something. What are your thoughts on that? Well, okay, so... Magic came out with receipts. Like, it's, so is is the email actually out that people can actually see? Or I don't it? know. I don't know. But 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 Magic is saying that the dude is kind of talking out of both sides of his of his mouth. Pretty much, yeah. He like, said, well, he's just saying he felt backstabbed and betrayed, uh, betrayed by. Uh, I think his name is uh, Polinka, Rob Polinka. Uh huh. Yeah. Behind closed doors and right. emails, the dude is back is back. Because they actually kept copied him on emails talking about him, the owner and uh, okay. Palenka, yeah. But in, but in front of the cameras and 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 the microphone, right? Magic is a great guy. Uh huh. Working with them. Okay. Um, Magic Johnson does not need to take any of that stress and drama. Like it's 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 Magic Johnson. Like you, Matt. Matt Magic, bruh, bounce. Magic, yeah. Bounce, run, run, mm-hmm. run. And that's that's what's great about Magic. Magic, for those who don't know, he has been a fighter, not in in a champion, not not only in basketball, but in life. Like yeah. This man from the diagnosis that he got nearly thirty years ago. Yeah. And can you believe that it's it's almost thirty years? Yeah, that's crazy. This man was probably told that he didn't have six months to live. Mm-hmm. Especially back in then, so, ninety one. Yep. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And and this man is living his life. He's thriving. He is healthy, and it's almost like you don't even think about it. No, you, you don't. Uh uh-uh. uh You don't even think about it. You don't even think about it. So, um, he doesn't need that. Mr. You know, Magic's good. Magic can do so so many other things. Right. I agree. Other people, and he doesn't need that yet. Mm-hmm. Good for you, Magic. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Because I always felt that Magic is just one of those, just a genuinely good person. Yeah. Is he perfect? No, he is not. I'm not saying that the man's perfect. No one's perfect. But he just gives me just that. Yeah. Just a genuinely good tip. Just a good dude. Exactly. You know, just a good dude. Yeah. And I don't want him dealing with all that backstabbing drama. Like he's not about that. He's not about that that 
petty, catty stuff. So yeah. Well, and Pat Riley yeah. said, Pat Riley said, well, he's not surprised Magic Johnson speaking on it because Magic will speak his mind. He said that's one thing he knows Magic about Magic. Will, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And good for Magic. Absolutely speaking. Yep. Absolutely. Because it was so it was so public what happened, you know what I mean? And so I yeah. of course he's gonna speak about it. You know. Yeah. And yeah. and Magic should be able to defend himself. Mm-hmm. He should be able to defend your character. If someone is trying to assassinate your character or if they're lying, you need to be able to correct the record. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So kudos to him. Yeah. So um yeah. Um Magic Bounce. Right. He is. Magic mm-hmm. Bounce. Magic Bounce. Did um, really quickly? Did you see the um, that little press conference that Magic gave a few months back? That's kind of turned into like a little gif. Mm mm. Hold on. Is it pronounced gif or is it gif? That gif is gif. Is it, yeah. It, it is a gif. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. Cool. Because I don't want to be that dude. Like he's saying it. Okay. It's gif. All right. Cool. But anyway, so we're, we're like he's like um, I'm not gonna be back there. No. <laughs> Don't you remember that little video? You didn't see the. It said what now? He he was asked about his future kind of with the Lakers. Mm-hmm. And he and he said in essence, "Well, I'm not gonna be back there anyway, or something like that." And he's kind of shaking his head like, "You know, oh. I'm not gonna be back. Yeah, uh, nah, nah, gonna be back there." Like, nope, that's it. My, um, right, that's not my burden. Uh huh. Don't worry about. And he sounded relieved. Yeah, when yeah. When he said, like, I'm, I'm just happy that I'm out there. But anyway, what's going to happen? Lakers better do something. This is it. This year coming up, this season, they got to step up. Yeah. Ron, Ron, you better get these get these guys together, get these people in order. We need something. Or he's out. If they don't make the playoffs next year, LeBron is out. Yeah, yeah. He's leaving. He's leaving. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, so get it together. Get it together. All right, that's all I got in sports, man. That's it. All right, Aaron. Well, good to have you back. Have a great week. We'll talk next Monday. All right. All right. all right, right back after this.
take a trip, you could take a trip to Tobago, my yard. They know what we sip, they know what we sip, they know what we sip when we get to the bar. Listen, that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Special shout out to our guest panel, Derek, Dwayne, and Savage for joining us tonight uh, to weigh in on hot topics. I want you all to have a great week, and we'll talk again next Monday. Peace and good night. Tonight,